day everyone in today's lesson we're going to talk about polar and non-polar now let's get into it so the objective of the lesson is to determine whether the molecule is polar or non-polar so i have here a prepared experiment that presents the polarity of the sun which is like the both light like dissolves like and to further understand what is like dissolves like this cooking oil and water will let you understand what it's all about now i will put this cooking oil into it and observe what happened assume that this cooking oil is a hand soap and i will attempt to wash my hands on the water In this lesson, we're going to use a periodic table of elements. So, the types of bond can be determined from electronegativity difference between combining atoms. Electronegativity difference is obtained by the electronegativity values of elements obtained from periodic table. So, what is electronegativity? Electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bending pair of electrons. So how are we going to use the periodic table of elements to determine the electronegativities of the bond? So the electronegativities generally increase from left to right across a period. This is due to an increase in nuclear charge. Alkali metals have the lowest electronegativities, while halogens have the highest. Because most noble gases do not form compounds, they do not have electronegativities. Note that there is a little variation among the transition metals. Electronegativity is generally decreased from top to bottom within a group due to the larger atomic size. I have here a Pauling scale system which is to determine the types of bonds and the value of electronegativity difference. So we have the types of bonds of ionic, which is the value difference is 1.7 or more, and the polar covalent, which is less than 1.7, and the non-polar covalent, which is 0 to 0 0.4, which is very low. So, what is polar bond? A molecule is classified as a polar molecule when arrangement of the atom is such that one end of the molecule has a positive electrical charge and the other end has a negative charge. A polar molecule forms an atom with a high electronegativity bond with a less electronegative atom. So, a polar molecule has an electrical so what is polar bond? So we have here an example of a polar bond, which is the hydrogen and fluorine. So fluorine is far more electronegative than hydrogen. The electrons in a bond are held much closer to fluorine, creating a dipole in a molecule. This is because the negatively charged electron in the bond between hydrogen and fluorine are concentrated around fluorine. Fluorine has a partial negative charge and the hydrogen has a partially positive charge. Be careful not to get confused though, even though both sides or species are partially charged, this is not an ionic one. It is a polar covalent bond. Since you know what is polar bond, let's go now with a nonpolar. 
So, a net polar molecule has no separation of charge. So, no positive or negative poles are formed. In other words, the electrical charge of a nonpolar molecule are evenly distributed across the molecule. Nonpolar molecules tend to dissolve well in nonpolar solvent, which are frequently organic. Since polar bonds are very greedy, now let's go with the nonpolar, which is an example of oxygen dioxide. Although oxygen is very electronegative, it is not polar because both atoms have the same electronegativity. Electrons are shared equally between them. So, meaning the polar bond is very greedy and the nonpolar bond is very stable and contented to each other. And that's it for today. I hope you understand what is polar and nonpolar.